So our next speaker is Brett Harris from GCP Applied Technologies. Brett has 25 years experience in aggregates, concrete, admixtures, and cement. Brett joined GCP in 2015 as a regional tech service manager for Northeast USA and Eastern Canada. Brett is active in many industry associations, including ACI, ASTM, PCI, NRMCA, RES, and regional industry associations. Brett has a degree in technical marketing from Clemson. He lives in Northern Virginia, Virginia with his wife, Stacy, and three children. Uh, Brett's going to be discussing consistency via in-transit concrete management, aiding contractors, and reducing job site delays. Go ahead, Brett. Thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. Consistency in transit, always important. Uh, as we talked about earlier, uh, and some of the other presenters were saying, uh, not only do you have to get the concrete there uh, up on deck, but it also really needs to be consistent. We talk about pumping. Why do we pump? Um, if somebody showed it's easier than a bunch of shuttle buggies or uh, mixing it on site in small buckets. Uh, pumps, really, they take up a small amount of space and can really help deliver a lot of concrete for fast placement in a hurry. So the challenge is pumping concrete in downtown Chicago. A lot of times you're dealing with very high strengths very high MOE mixes that can be incredibly sticky, as some people mentioned earlier. One of the projects we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, they had a requirement of 70 yards an hour. Pore size, about 200 yards or more. Uh, and they might be pumping up to 60 stories. So, first thing that is important is you have to have a good mix because no matter how consistent you deliver a mix, if it won't pump in the first place, you're kind of dead in the water, it's worthless. And some of the things to consider are proper por portioning, as Walter mentioned, your aggregates, your cement. Uh, there can be some specialty admixtures that can actually make pumping really sticky mixes a lot easier. Or if you, for some reason, you're pumping something that has to be placed on an angle or slope, uh, where you need a two inch, two to three inch slump, some of these admixtures can actually make that easier to pump. Uh, we, you may use tools that help predict pump pressures when you're developing your mix. Uh, so there's a, you know, sliding uh, rheometer pump or a sliding pipe rheometer is a tool that can be used. Uh, I've read some research where people are actually using electromagnetic currents to ease the lubrication layer formed. Um, so you kind of have the plug and you have the lubrication layer on the outer edges of the pipe that allow things to pump. And then you have to think about slump retention, the prediction of that, what, what kind of slump life do you need? Uh, and typically for large jobs, they may do some testing of that. So the problem is what happens between when they batch the concrete and it gets delivered to site? So there's a lot of challenges that can take place. Um, you know, you end up with a lot of QC on site, but it's only periodic trucks. It may not be every truck. And then we have the expertise of drivers that just know the slump or they can hear the slump. And that, that uh, is not always the most accurate. So one solution for that is in-transit slump measurement. And as a basic level that monitors slump in transit and it can measure things continuously. So the advantage of that is it does give us much better idea of what's going on for every load. Um, so it's not just the loads that are checked and everything else is based off what the drivers are saying. And you have a few extra pieces of equipment on a truck that can tell that, you know, display that tells us what slump is. There's usually maybe a temperature monitor, revolution monitor, um, some processing equipment to tell us what that is. And we can get a kind of a look into what's going on as the trucks are actually arriving to site, slump versus target. Um, what loads are next, what slumps in transit, that can help QC know what adjustments to make at the plant. And most of these are actually very accurate. Uh, 
you know, occasionally mixes will need to be dialed in, but most of the results, uh, if the mix is properly designed and worked with, these slump reading devices are very accurate. But no matter what happens in that situation, when you get to the job, there's always last minute adjustments. Um, hopefully they aren't last minute adjustments uh, like this one here, uh, which is one of my favorite shots. You have the guy down below testing the concrete and the contractor up above uh, is adding water to it, going into the pump itself. Uh, good mixing there. So if we're pumping in downtown Chicago, there's other issues. Because at the end of the day, if everything is running smoothly and there's no changes, you know, most ready mix producers, if there's no change, can get things dialed in, particularly if they kind of get a steady flow of seeing what every truck is doing, where they can have the proper slump on site. But then there's the unknowns. And if we're in Chicago, one of the big unknowns is traffic issues and there's always been traffic issues so that's one of the primary unknowns <clears throat> so even if we're adjusting for the normal we get the unnormal and we're back to last minute adjustments at the pump so what are solutions for that one might be trying to use mobile batch mixers on site uh, the problem with mobile batch mixers, although they, you know, you can batch exactly what you want, load after load right there, it takes lots of trucks, uh, your drivers, or you have to have a lot of QC of people available, one for every single truck. They would not be friendly for doing the 8 to 20,000 PSI mixes that you see in Chicago. Um, so not very practical. So one of the other solutions is actually have in transit slump management. So the difference here is that not only does it monitor and measure, but these systems actually manage the slump. They will add water or add mixture in transit so that the truck arrives at the job site in spec and ready to discharge. And these just have a few extra pieces of equipment over your traditional slump I guess measurement systems where you actually have maybe an admix tank and you have some additional water valves uh, that can manage the input of water. So with that, not only do we get to see what the slump is versus target, we actually get to see how much water and or admix is added for it to achieve the proper slump. And that system is managed all the way to the point of discharge. Uh, this actually relieves some issues for QC. They're able to see that. They can make front-end adjustments if they need to. Uh, but now when the concrete arrives on site, you're only having to confirm some trucks. You can see what every single truck is doing and maybe make a small adjustment to air. Here's an example uh, on your left, and you can see the truck leaving the plant is at slump as it just barely falls below slump, uh, some admixture is added, uh, which takes it back to slump. As it travels further, it falls below a set criteria and additional admix is added so that it arrives on slight within the slump target. Off to the left, you can see where <clears throat> Uh, there's just a small histogram um, just kind of showing a comparison of in target versus what was without target. With some of the new technology available, ASTM has actually uh, changed uh, some things where they actually allow for water or admix to be uh, added during transit. So this is different from what we used to deal with, uh, but now as long as the water cement ratio is not exceeded, this is allowed. All that water is tied into documentation on every load. Uh, what you wanna make sure if you're using a system like this is that you do have uh, in the specification, or if you're writing a specification, 
uh, that you allow for water shall be added in accordance with C94. So when we talk about consistency and having consistent trucks, one of the biggest issues is not only adjustment of truck loads at the tower, but the other issue is rejected trucks. So if you have a truck rejected, that can certainly cause a delay. Uh, if you end up with delays in some of these really sticky concretes, where they may be tightening up uh, as you're pumping up that, uh, in the high rise, that's a, a serious problem. So if you're using some of these on-site or uh, concrete management in transit management systems, um, you'll see that the deviation or variance of the slump of the concrete delivered is significantly less. Uh, typically, you know, it's within an inch, inch and a half that you're looking at versus three inches uh, that you're seeing there with some of the regular concrete, which means significantly less rejected loads, uh, which means a much smoother pour and much more consistent concrete at the top. Uh, for the finishers and pl people placing the concrete. As we had said before, if you have more consistent product, you don't have rejected trucks, trucks are arriving on tight or on time uh, and in, in proper slump, then there's actually savings in time for everyone. So you don't have the adjustment at the time of leaving the plant. Uh, when the truck arrives on site, it's at the right slump. It's able to maintain that slump while it's waiting to pour. And so when it's time for that truck to pour, it can pour immediately. So in summary, the challenge, there was a Lake Street case study. Uh, the contractor requested 70 yards an hour. With that, in this study, all the trucks arrived in spec, ready to pour. The time on site per truck was reduced by roughly 10%. The overall labor time per pour was set was 25 to 30 minutes which at the end of the day equates to uh, financial savings for everyone. Are there any questions? Uh, Brett, maybe, maybe I'll ask uh, one, um, because you, you state in the system about the management, which I fully agree on uh, is, is the best thing to do. Uh, and then you stated that it is uh, water amateurs. <laughs> and, and Jason just asked a question as well and was going to be exactly the same question. So Jason, I'll ask your question. Uh, are the trucks able to know to mix after addition of the water or the admixture? And I'll like to add to that is how do you decide whether you want to add water or admixture? So systems like these will have instruction sets that are set up by the quality control department typically. And it specifically will decide telemix whether water, admix only, or you may allow water up to a given water cement ratio and admix after that. And that's all designated in instruction sets. Every mix can be set up differently. Okay. And then Jason's question specifically looks at uh, do the trucks know that they actually need to intensify mixing uh, after the water or the admixture? Because I assume if they go on the road that are rotating pretty slowly, so then you want to mix that water or that admixture in. So do you accelerate? Do you change the drum speed uh, of the mixer? So some of the research has actually been done on that, and and a lot of the stuff actually on the road uh, can mix in at a slower rate. Uh, you know, it, it's still it's not based on a number of revolutions. And so it, it does not always have to mix at an accelerated rate. Uh, Brett, thank you very much.